Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, uh, we're going to be discussing Ray Ortland exposing himself as a liberal. And this isn't super new, but when someone tells you who they are, you should listen. And we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into Ray Ortland, uh, specifically his background and the church that he goes to, which I think is one of the worst churches in America. And I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that. Uh, so we're going to talk about Ray Ortland today, but first I want you to know Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at our patron-like system at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join, linked in the description below. But the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast if you are new. So a quick background on Ray Ortland, and this is sort of a prequel to the story, is that Ray Ortland, um, he's a... He's a force in Big Eva, which is a shorthand for the evangelical industrial complex or, you know, a lot of the money that you can make in evangelicalism, that level of market share is Big Eva. And while he's currently an emeritus council member of the Gospel Coalition or emeritus, but emeritus sounds more fun to say, and it's like a disease in many cases, um... So he's big in the Gospel Coalition. His son is a rising star as well as, you know, prominent Christ, uh, Christian YouTuber Gavin Ortland, who's also part of the Gospel Coalition's Keller Center. Um, and on the liberal media platform threads, this is the precursor to the story, Ray Ortland gave a cringe take, basically saying, wouldn't it be great if the Democrats nominated Liz Cheney and she accepted? What a paradigm shift like. We need a paradigm shift like that. The nation would finally have a positive rally rallying point crazy i know and the reason why that's crazy is she's not liked and for good reason her policies aren't liked you have to be insanely left wing to support liz cheney at all at all the cheneys were a terrible political family and if i'm gonna give flowers to liberals i think dick cheney might have been the only thing that liberals were right about from the right premise that you know dick cheney was a war profiteer they they were right about that and from the right premise they were right about dick cheney so why would liz cheney be much different you know and i could say the same thing about gavin ortland and ray ortland uh and we're going to talk more about that uh and this is the tweet, uh, the thread post from Ray Ortland, who says, never Trump, this time Harris, always Jesus. And then David French replies, this is the way. And threads, if you're not familiar with threads, this is the Facebook equivalent of Twitter X. Uh, no one's really on it. But people who quit Twitter in virtue signal fashion, they join threads. So you got David French on there. You got Ray Ortland on there. So that's the audience that they're speaking to. It's a very cultivated audience and they can say more liberal things like this because they're in a liberal echo chamber. So never Trump, this time Harris, always Jesus. That's a clear endorsement of Kamala Harris. It doesn't get any more clearer than that. And David French, who's already endorsed Kamala Harris, again, agreeing with him. He understood it as an endorsement of Harris. Ray Ortland would then lie about it and say he's been misinterpreted and he deleted this post. But we've seen the evidence. And I would like to, and I pointed out Ray Ortland is on staff at Emmanuel Church and people somehow think that Gavin Ortland is also, isn't also a liberal. So let's talk about uh, Emmanuel Nashville, which is a wretched hive of big Eva scum and villainy. And the way I begin this article, and this article was written back in August, uh, we see that after the fall of Robert Morris, Gateway Church turned to celebrity pastors to fill the vacancy and stem the reported loss of membership. And so they turned to Max Lucado to lend his credibility to their cause. This is far more common in the charismatic megachurch culture than it is in more reformed and complementarian tradition. It is seldom to come across a church that trades in celebrity to boost its influence as much as a manual church in Nashville, Tennessee. So 
That's kind of how I frame this church. This is a church that trades in celebrity influence. And look at the members of this cast of characters. It includes Ray Ortland, as mentioned. Gavin Ortland is also on staff there, which is insane. Uh, because they're basically just subsidizing, subsidizing his YouTube career. Russell Moore, again, that guy is bad news. He is an absolute heretic, an absolute liberal. He is in charge of Christianity or compromise today, as we like to call it around here, uh, which is a very gay affirming outlet, by the way. And then Sam Albury, who is a who's an associate pastor there. So the other the other three names I just mentioned are on the leadership. Sam Albury's an associate pastor there. He's part of the Tim Keller Center for Cultural Apologetics, just like Gavin Ortland is. And he's a big proponent of side B theology. This theology that preaches that homosexual desires and identity are not sin. Sam Albury is a major teacher in this field. He founded an organization called Living Out. Yes, that kind of Living Out. It is a very gay organization. And there's a quiz on their website about how gay affirming is your church. How welcoming are you to homosexuals? You can take a, a quiz on that on the Living Out website. It is terrible. And we talked on this channel about Gavin Ortland being a liberal, so I don't need to repeat myself. Uh, but his father being a liberal, again, just proves that the apple does not fall far from the tree. Another thing to note is Barnabas Piper, the son of John Piper, is also an associate pastor there. And he's most famous for his familiarity, you know, son of John Piper, obviously, and his unfortunate and highly publicized divorce. Uh... I don't necessarily include him in the four names that I've mentioned, but this is a church that trades in celebrity influence. Now, Ray Orland hasn't changed. He has always been someone who is a liberal who hates Christian culture. And it goes back to this post that he made on Twitter back in the day in 2021, where he says, I rejoice. At the decline of the Bible Belt region, it made bad people worse in the name of Jesus. Now many we actually now may we actually believe in him so that our churches stand out with both the truth of the gospel doctrine, truth of gospel doctrine and the beauty of gospel culture. To that end, I gladly devote my life. So, Ray Ortland wants to devote his life to destroying the Bible Belt because he believes that Christian culture is bad for Christianity, which is a ridiculous statement. You want to try and not Christian culture and see how good that is for Christianity? Go to China, go to North Korea, um, go to Israel. That area used to be 16% Christian. What happened? A not Christian culture took over. Go to East Germany. Prussia used to be a stronghold of Protestantism. What happened? A not-Christian culture took over. Go to France. What happened? A not-Christian culture took over. And guess what? When... There's a Christian culture. There might be a lot of fake Christians. But I also think numerically speaking, there are more Christians. And I want to see a culture that is more Christians, even if it means there are more fake Christians. It's just a, it's, it's a math game in, in some respects. It's just numbers. But Ray Ortland wants to destroy the Bible Belt. Voting for Kamala Harris is very consistent with this goal of destroying Christian culture. The Bible Belt is a beautiful thing. It is probably what has kept the United States from going the way of Canada, from going the way of the United Kingdom, from going the way of most of Western Europe. So I, for one, am thankful for the Bible Belt. I don't live in the Bible Belt. I live in Maryland. And to me, this view just views people as pawns for what he thinks is best. He thinks it's best if the Bible Belt is destroyed because then there would be more authentic believers. I don't think that math adds up at all. 
Because even at the end of the day, the Bible Belt is a superior culture to most parts of America. I'm just going to give them their props. They deserve it. So, anyway, Ray Orland is telling you who he is. And it's not good. It's not good. He is a liberal. He goes to one of the worst churches in the United States. We've talked a lot about Russell Moore, by the way. He is a villain in the church. So... Those are my thoughts on that. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Lab. If you like this content, do subscribe. Also, have a blessed day. Stay based. Christ is king. And we will catch you on the next one.